Guten Abend. Well, good evening. Good evening to all of you. Well, today we have had a very intensive day. We have learned a lot and more than that. The objective of this conference has already been achieved. So the objective is that we become aware of the levels of the issue. Refugees, volunteers, mayors, we have interlinked. A network has been established. And even yesterday evening, we had the opportunity to do so in a very positive atmosphere. And this makes me very happy. And I hope you share this feeling. Well, today I uh, talk with Jak Bartels, has already been introduced. He is a councillor on Hammer and Piemont. This is in Lower Saxony. And, well, this discussion will be, well, a bit more relaxed. And Mr. Bartels, you are well known as somebody who said, yes, we require immigration. We can make it. You wrote a letter to Angela Merkel. Well, you didn't write, give me more, but you wrote, we can accommodate the people. We have the resources. Do you still hold this view now that we have had four months of a major influx of refugee? I heard up to 4,000 um, housing opportunities had to be provided to people a day. Are you still that optimistic? Yes, I'm still optimistic. And I thank you very much for asking this question, because it has been asked very frequently. So there is something I would like to start with. First of all, I want to start you. Thank you for organizing such an event, because, you know, it's part of our business <laughs> as councillors and as mayors to well, uh, participate in such congresses and the international level. And everything you have done here is outstanding. And I would like to thank you very much for that. And well, I have really regretted every single minute that I have to leave tomorrow, because tomorrow morning I have another appointment. Well, coming back to your question, I absolutely share your view. And there is one thing. If you are able to address things in a direct manner, then it's, it differs from just reading out facts and figures. And you know, I felt ashamed when I listened to the last roundtable discussion. Immigration and uh, well, um, the issue of people who come to our countries to flee. We often hear about these people. And when some say that they present a risk, and now I hear of our colleagues from Turkey and Greece, and then I hear the colleagues from Jordan and Lebanon, and then, well, disqualifies all the things we've heard. In our countries, we're such large countries, we have so much infrastructure, and then we raise the white flag. No, this cannot be the final answer, the conclusive answer. Certainly, this implies logistic challenges. And then one fine day, we really hope that these people no longer have to flee their home countries because this is the most terrible thing. But not being able to provide that and saying that countries who are not able to provide all these relief structures in such wealthy countries, this is embarrassing. Well, it has been clear right from the outset that there is a difference whether you come from an island or whether you are in a neighboring country a country that neighbors a conflict hospital, whether you come from a city and well, a um, councillor is like a mayor, or the super mayor of, of a region. So, yes, so these land guises, there are 70 to 80,000 inhabitants, large ones up to one half a million, mine is 150,000. 
is, is murderous. The average size, we have a huge city, Hamel, and several small cities, and this is one land, guys. This is not uh, just a periphery, no, no, this is not rural, this is a semi-urban area. It's not far from Hanover, one hour by car, even less. But what we notice is the demographic change, especially in the smaller cities. And well, this brings us to the topic, what does that do to us? And we, see, and we believe that it is a benefit because of an immigration policy enables us in our villages to create structures so and also we have immigrants all of a sudden we no longer discuss about closing schools consider how long we have discussed that and then there is the opportunity to revive structure for instance empty premises can now be filled with new life. It even might sound cynical if you just think along economic lines, but this could also mean that the resources we spend funding is a major investment in the demographic crisis or in, in resolving this demographic crisis. Yes. Well, you can take a very simple approach. It's a very evident matter. And I think this makes the discussion a bit difficult. I feel that what is going on in Austria is happening in Germany. Unfortunately, you are one step ahead when it comes uh, to a ceiling, introducing ceiling. So this is a populist claim, and this will uh, just answer uh, resentment, and this does not provide a solution. This is the same discussion as we've had in Germany, but looking at that and saying, I have to respect people. I have to respect on what is going on and what is going on at the global level. And I cannot just shy back. I have a responsibility. There is the Geneva Refugee Convention and there is the fundamental right to asylum. And I think this is a principle. And it doesn't say, well, it's true as long as it doesn't involve any work. No, it is a permanent thing, and this should top the agenda. And then we have the economic aspect. And it's a truth of the billions this might cost, 90 to 95 percent, will go back into uh, the national economies in wages, in consumption goods, in well, all the crafts uh, services. And for private individual to rent out accommodation so every euro I invest into integration can be saved because I no longer have to pay social transfer uh, services and you just have to enlarge the focus and not only look at this one current year no I have to but see uh, the wider perspective, just because it can be difficult, I cannot just try back. This is irresponsible. And how did you succeed in uh, convincing your people to taking them by the hand and well, convincing them of this positive mood? Have you got special tricks? Can you share your secrets with us? I do not know whether I have succeeded. Election day is forthcoming. So it is a constant effort because it is very important to serve as role models. You, as politicians, have to serve as role models. We cannot just well uh, see a mood and react. No, we create a situation. The German Minister of the Interior made a very fatal statement that he said the refugees themselves to a place and as he said they take a taxi wherever they got the money from and then they go from one institution to the next considering a uh, minister of the interior making such a statement this was poison this was prejudice a dissemination of prejudice and this something this must not happen because this is irresponsible and there are people who do not care about that, but the majority really, well, 
uses these politicians as role models. And there were people who were responsible at the uh, municipal levels, and they raised the white flag. And even in some of the figures were different. And imagine you're on a cruise, and you have a captain, and the captain tells you there is this and that, and there is an iceberg, and uh, there's the water, it's getting cold, and so on. And then he calms you down, and it's happy. And But when... He goes through the ship and tells everybody, oh, dear, there's an iceberg. Oh, be careful. Oh, my dear, that's terrible. No, it's a matter of communication. And I believe that if I believe that it's good and I can tell people that it's good and share that with them, it's also an emotion. And, Issue. Yes, it's a struggle at the meta level. So you uh, uh, fight for the hearts of the people, fight for the emotions, and then there are struggles at the, so to speak, micro level, where you're always faced with issues you have to resolve. And we are here to learn from each other, from learn, to learn from each other, and not to learn that everything is difficult, but what we need to learn is how we can overcome difficulties, particularly on this micro level. So. Have you got two, three pieces of experience you want to share with us? Best practices, for instance, do not necessarily have to be experience you made yourself, but something you have witnessed somewhere else. Are there three super things you could present to us? Yes, one thing came to my mind. We spoke about, in the meeting, we discussed our violence and language. And I think you share this feeling. There are lots of rumors from the very right wing angle. There are bad words terrible prejudices, and these are normal people, and they sign these statements with their name. And, well, I have to answer, but I don't want to answer such emails, for instance. But then we said we take uh, these terrible things, and on our website, we have these rumor sections on the website, and there we really raise people's awareness to the fact that these are rumors which are terrible and they are targeted. And consider there is a supermarket, for instance, and that is said now that there are asylum seekers and they will steal more. And then they say that we from the land Christ compensate the shop owners from the losses they suffered because well, all the foreigners and refugees, they go and to the markets and just steal. And then I tell them, well, this is a rumor. And then I t- really tell people, well, go and check this rumor on our website. And this is important. We want to isolate all these things and also, well, um, create some good practice examples. And we know that people adopt an increasingly critical attitude. And there are concerns and worries, but we have to respond and present solutions. Well, there are so many topics that have been addressed in individual workshops. And if I may just select a few. And the issue of education has been addressed at several levels. So with the kids, it's most easiest because there is mandatory schooling. And then 15, 16-year-olds unaccompanied minors, then uh, 20-year-old kids who no longer are subject to mandatory schooling. And they wait for months until they get German tuition, and then you wait, and waiting, well, this does something to you. You wait for the outcome of your asylum proceedings, then you wait for the uh, uh, the, uh, ability to attend language classes. And then there's one thing I hear, don't waste time. Start on day one. Start immediately. Have you got positive and negative experience you could share with us? Yes, on a daily basis. And... This is something that we see in our everyday life. The proceedings take incredibly long. People are bored and they don't know uh, if it will continue, how it will continue. They are afraid that it will not that, that they will not be treated in a fair and just manner because of their background, their nationality, their ethnic background. And but this is an administrative issue. Why don't we succeed in having faster procedures? So for lower Saxony. There is an opportunity uh, to 
increased pace. And we could do that, and then we could reduce the period for six months. Yes, we from Lower Saxon had said, well, we take over all that, uh, the registration, primary health care provision, and so on, because it works. And we wanted to provide a solution in all so that at the um, federal level, uh, this overtax the structures. And in uh, the town halls, we do not have so much additional stuff. But I have to share this burden with all public structures. And then we stepped in and we built it up very well according to the ident- uh, predefined processes. And I think responsibility can be shared. So even registration wouldn't a problem for us. We could do that as well, yes. particularly when it comes to filing an application for asylum and then people and they have made the application for asylum after six to eight months. They are recognized or in worst case not recognized, but they know how their future will be like. But wherever people live together, um, coexist, um, there might be conflicts, conflicts between the locals between um, the new arrivals within this group and we know crime is presented in an exaggerated man um, well but we often see crime when people are bored so have you experienced that and have you dealt with that unfortunately we were one among the first when there was a major bank robbery in september probably you've heard that we, uh, we um there was uh, a fire attack and especially crime in connection with uh, flight and migration. Almost 1,000 attacks, and something I would like to tell you on the sidelines. Those who have done that are now sued for attempted murder, and this was a good sign by the public prosecutor because this was attempted murder. And in the morning after this fire attack, we call, I got up and then there was a call and I saw this house and everything smelled burned. There was a fire and nothing happened. And fortunately, the little kid didn't sleep in this room uh, where the fire attack took place. And I said, well, we need to do something. And with lots of people, we organized a demonstration on this very evening. And the title was Good Neighborliness. And this was good, because there were more than 1,000 people in this small village. And it's the good thing about social media. This was disseminated quickly. Also, the radio came and reported on that. And this negative thing was turned into a positive news coverage. And on the next day, Every newspaper had to report about the positive thing about this demonstration, and this was good. And you must not provide these perpetrators with so much room. And you meant that we also started to join forces, we the people in the region. So what about the accommodation? I think I think there will be all sorts of accommodation. What works well, what does not work so well? How do you go about? You know, places for the people have you got so many empty houses well <laughs> something in between we find it easier than a larger city Hanover for instance there are not so many apartments but apart from that they have lots of financial opportunities to change that we have some reserves but sometimes housing is not available so landlords do not want to rent out or the apartments are not renovated or have been refurbished but a few months ago we started a program where we become the uh, um, renters and not uh, the asylum seekers. And for people who want to rent out their houses or um, apartments to us, we offer 10 years of a contract. And this is something you don't have, because looking at this 10 years and the funding, then you can refurbish housing. And this is good, and uh, well, this is uh, um, a very good approach, and we try to make sure that we we mix um, people from different backgrounds, and they live in uh, this house, for instance, and this also increases the value of the house. Yeah, there are areas where the house is 
would be difficult to rent out, or at, at least the investment would not have paid off. And here, the buildings are now being renovated, and this is a win-win situation. The village wins, and the owner wins. And uh, well, um, the people who are now in nice accommodation, so we do not have any gym halls or so. No, no. On, this is no mass accommodation here in this initial reception. We have 1,000 people, but it's very nice because we do that ourselves. And we have just houses or apartments, flats. We do not have any gym halls or gymnastics halls or sports halls. Okay. And this brings us to how do I arrive? How do I settle in a society, particularly after your half learned German, uh, then, uh, well, uh, enhanced your skills and so on. Then your uh, certificates have been approved. Have you got some experience with integration, or is it a bit too soon? Well, the structure have been built up, but we noticed that some improvement or fine-tuning is still necessary. This huge, uh, well, red tape. Well, we are, I represent an authority myself, but you know, job center and all that has uh, to be well settled and then the structures have to be understood. Oh, uh, even for the helpers, it's difficult to understand and you must not forget the background of the people and what they were used to. It is difficult, but we try to establish clear structures, better descriptions, we publish folders in order to simplify all that. And we really direct all that to people who act as volunteers and accompany these people. And then it works very well. Companies, for instance, are very willing to accept that the experience we have met is very good and they are ready and willing to hire refugees. And something which has already been expressed in the discussions yesterday and in the World Cafes, and these were following examples, which in my view are highly interesting. And in most cases, this is just a mere coincidence. Not so it happens that refugees from the same country have good English skills sometimes even speak German, but they can also act as, well, community interpreters, so to speak. So they help um, their compatriots who, who don't have so much know-how, whose English skills or German skills are not as good as theirs. For instance, some who have come from rural regions in their home countries, and then these refugees, uh, better skilled refugees, help their compatriots. So the best trained, let's call them the best trained or best skilled refugees, and they can be, so to speak, used as well interpreters, as bridge builders who contribute to that. And so, well, there's a lot of unused potential. Have you also seen such examples? Well, some approaches have been successful, some rather frustrating the field of interpretation. So we pay them wages. There's a solidarity among these uh, people, uh, among refugees, and in the house which uh, was uh, attacked uh, and people solidarized. Now, what is difficult is there was some need in the field of doctors or nurses, and we know that there are some doctors, but the drama, you know, I, I know it's difficult to have the certificates accepted, but then you have well-trained doctors, and it's really difficult to use them as, as, as nurses, for instance, and this is very, very difficult. And then there is the insurance legislation and so on. And although I don't know how the situation is like in Ostrava, but I believe that is at least that difficult. And the solution could be so easy. Yeah, that's our problem. The standards are too high 
and standards are not flexible. And I always said if we had had the same construction of uh, the same um, by the situation as we uh, are having now, if we had had it during the Bosnia crisis, then we would still have the same problems. Yeah, no, no, this construction regulation, will they make some sense? And then sometimes he said, okay, we want to invest in a reasonable manner and we do not want to see negative events, but it's necessary to find quick and pragmatic uh, solutions because sometimes the standards we define are too sophisticated and then you have to define exemptions and to some extent these exemptions are defined slowly and then you cannot adopt a pragmatic approach but if you do so then it works on the ground and sometimes you just have to take action and roll up your sleeves and then now once the situation has well relaxed a little then you could do that but this requires a strong political standing. So saying that, yes, I represent the state, but I do not abide by the rules. And I hope that nobody will uh, will report me to the police. And many will say, I prefer the safer uh, side. And I just smoke us on the fall, small brink. Yeah, but you know, there's always an emergency situation. And what happens if you don't take action? Just consider the time when we uh, used all the barracks and there was a crisis. And then uh, the health ministry said, well, the um, certain germ tests or salmonella tests we had to conduct. And the alternative was in uh, the well prepared, ready prepared barracks and not to house the people there, but to ha- accommodate them in the tests outside in the uh, in tents outside in the field. And well, the, the doctor and uh, the engineer said, well, uh, we just skip it. You know, the people who arrived at the beginning of September, the people wanted a bed, they wanted to take a shower, they needed water. They had to cook, and there we just took a pragmatic approach. And I always informed the Ministry of the Interior, and then I said, well, it, it worked, but they have never answered yet, so obviously it works. So if they don't complain, then I can continue. So a very good solution. Well, and we have already touched on that issue. Obviously, those who are active on the ground, all these players on the ground depend on the mood at the macro level, which is created by uh, journalists, TV journalists who sit in Cologne or white drawn newspapers in, in Berlin who have never seen a refugees and have never faced the problems you are facing on a daily basis. And these people, um, they uh, will determine the mood of the population and how much do we notice that uh, on the ground, the people in in your land guys are very close to the problem, and they know well, there might be something bad. But it works well in our immediate vicinity. Yeah, but this is what I said. You have to serve as an example, to serve as a role model, and you have to tell people it works, and you have to repeat it on an ongoing basis. But I can tell you this is very exhaustive currently. And since, well, the beginning of the new year, even in December, in December there was this change. And I'm, I have to face so much nonsense, refugees. Yes, but in Germany, and this is what I said when I said I was shamed, ashamed when I heard about the about the situation in the Lebanon, in Jordan, in the cities, in small refugees. In Germany, they don't see any refugees on their streets because the situation has not changed for the majority of the population. So fear is being instigated. and. The, this is actually not true in the real life. And those who do not see any refugees, they they spread all the rumors, and they write le- letters of prejudice, skeptical, and they don't leave their homes in the east. 
And criminal police works hand in hand with us. And two days ago, they published the current criminal statistics. No surprise at all. So nothing happened. And But nevertheless, there are these rumors, and you always have to counter that. And well, this uh, is exhaustive. But you mustn't stop. So you and all the others decided work committedly because there are no problems. You always work committedly when there are problems in order to overcome the problems. When you feel that it is tiring, that you are exhausted. Well, you are tired and exhausted because there is a lot to do. If there was nothing to do, then you shouldn't be tired. And this brings me to what is important that now that we are all a bit tired because we've worked hard. I thank you, your partners, for having spent the uh, day and the evening with us. And I actually thank all of you for participating in this event uh, shared on, uh, based on solidarity and that we inspire courage in each other and talk to each other. And I think it is good and inspires a good feeling. Not now, this brings me to the less exhaustive part of the evening, where we do not have to concentrate, where we do not have to speak, where we can relax a little. And André Heller, I would like to ask you to come to the stage and, well, together, to present something outstanding. Thank you very much.